State having played as I think it was 1898. Oregon State won. Once again, remember for each overtime, they flip the coin, and if you win the toss, you really elect to go. The theory is you elect to go on defense, see if you can't hold your opponent to zero. Akili Smith back, fires the football, completes it at the 17 yard line. All of a sudden, he's going away from his wide receivers, and that is three passes in a row he's thrown to Jed Weaver. Let's go back and take a look at that controversial play. That was on fourth down. Well, and it's interesting. Sure enough, he does get charred before the ball actually hits him, and the side judge is the one that throws the flag, but as I said, the flag came out of his pocket, just dropped on the ground right near the sideline, and nobody could see that the flag had been thrown. Fans poured onto the field, and he picked it up and threw the flag. Achilles Smith will be sacked. They bring him on the blitz. Micah Moore. Micah Moore coming from the outside linebacker spot. Unblocked, just puts his helmet right into the back of Akili Smith. And Smith not able to get rid of the ball that time. It'll be third down for Oregon. Third and six. Hartley Haynes left. Griffin right. Lone setback is Chris Young, the fullback. Smith throws and completes it for a first down to again his tight end, Jed Weaver. He needed to get to the 15 for a first. He got to the 14. And he played that awfully close. As you said a moment ago, Fizz, sure enough, he's starting to work the tight end into the into the routes a little more. They've been so wide receiver oriented. But finding Jed Weaver underneath and just getting it up for the first down. From the 14. They run Brown. Nope. And a flag goes down. This could be holding. Sifa O'Reilly came from the left defensive side to make the hit on Jerry Brown. And Oregon has just been unable to run at all tonight. Yeah, their longest run of the night, 12 yards by Jerry Brown. Good enough a penalty against Oregon will set them back. Sure, replay first down. Let's go down to Paul Sunderland. Well, as you mentioned, the start of each overtime, we reflip, and Oregon State deferred. Oregon gets to cho choose the goal that they want to attack. And if you're wondering why they went this way, because really after that torrential rainstorm that has ended, the wind not a factor. But there are about 15,000 Oregon fans down at this end, a much more friendly area of the football stadium. Back to you guys. Thanks, Paul. That's a very good note. Now all of a sudden when you're calling the uh, signals out, your wide receivers can hear you. <laughs> there are the Oregon fans in that south end zone. Now from the 33 yard line, 32. They bring more in the blitz. Smith throws, completes the pass, another flag goes down. Did they hit Akili late? Because the flag again was very late. Uh, it's another flag against Oregon. It'll drive them back even farther. Boy, you hate to see all the flags flying in overtime. And that's very, very late. I mean, the pass has been caught. Holding. Offense, 10 yards, final foul, still first down. The pass had been caught, the tackle had been made, and then the flag comes out. Well, you know, you know, sometimes you just can't argue. And uh, you know, when the flags come out, 69 looks like he's holding. Yeah, Aguirre. That was Marco Aguirre. Aguirre, sure enough, had his man tied up pretty good. Penalties and yards tonight. Each team getting up over 90 yards. First and 43. Smith looked for that tight end. Terrence Carroll came right through him. Another flag goes down. This will be pass interference. Boy, right now, you know, it was uh, actually a pretty clean game up until <laughs> right into overtime. All of a sudden, the flags are flying. This time, Terrence Carroll comes in and jars the receiver. Pass interference on the defense. 
officials have suddenly taken over. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I was going to say a moment ago, if you have first and 43, I tell you, you know, you know who I want as my quarterback? Akili Smith. <laughs> He's converted so many third and longs in this game. Now he has a first down. Boy, this intense rivalry. And this is a first and ten. This isn't a first and 43. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they'll move the chains yeah. all the way back. And yeah. They just have to get to the 32-yard line for a first down. A very big play. Good point. All of a sudden, defensive pass interference get automatic first down. So if Carroll just simply makes the tackle on Jed Weaver the tight end they're faced with a second and 37 because the play would have only been for six yards. That's Oregon State's second costly defensive penalty here in OT. But Oregon State knows their throw because Oregon has had no running game. They throw it underneath Weaver is there Weaver breaks the tackle. Jet has the first down to the 26 yard line. Well, that old cliche of take what the defense gives you, and right now they are giving them the tight end. Yep, and Akili Smith knows it right off the bat. They catch him in blitz once again, and he just pops the ball into the tight end. Jed Weaver and the, the man that came out to make the hit, Terrence Carroll, he's down right now with an injury. Nine catches for 87 yards for Jed Weaver. His best game in his career. Terrence Carroll was the injured man as he delivered the hit on Jed Weaver. He slid off and may have hurt his shoulder. Well, that's a big loss. He is a sophomore who started as a linebacker as a freshman. Now Keely Smith goes to the sideline to get a break, talk with his coach, Mike Bellotti. And Aaron Wright must come in to take over. You know, you got to like Akili Smith, though. Did, didn't he look kind of cool and calm with Barry? You know, had his helmet off. I mean, look at the look at the total number, 445. He's a leading yeah. rusher, too. Yeah. From the 26-yard line. They'll swing that pass out to the running back, and there's nothing there. They've gobbled up every single running back, and this time. It was Oregon State extra linebacker Brian Jones. Boy, again, Oregon State defense reading the play. They're able to execute, dig through the blockers, and put the hit on KP, Kevin Parker. I'm sorry, Jason Cooper. Oregon State, once again, Greg Newhouse coaching them up well, but again, faced with a Big second down. Second and nine. Will they throw to the tight end? Weaver looks to get open. They throw wide to Hartley, and Hartley has a short gain to the 23-yard line, so it's third down and about seven yards to go, maybe six. But still, passing situation for Mike Bellotti in Oregon. Yeah, once again, third and seven now. Have they put a linebacker right over Weaver just to stuff him at the line? And they may need Viegas, who is such a great kicker in the Pac-10 Conference this year. He came in 18 for 20. Oregon has been better than 50 percent converting third downs, and this is a third and six. Smith whips it right to Weaver, and Weaver leans forward and gets the first down. Boy, you said it a moment ago, Steve. You know what's you know what's interesting? The wideouts for Oregon are so dangerous. They're almost a little playing a little uh, overemphasizing pass coverage on those wideouts, and it allows Jed Whipper to kind of be the unfound man. And then all of a sudden, he sneaks out, pops out right along the sideline, gets enough for the first down, keeping this drive alive once again. Weaver has come out of the shadow. He's been a splendid tight end, the main target of Akili Smith in the late goings of the football game and now in overtime. Over the middle they go. It's Weaver again trying to break a tackle, but he'll have a short gain of just a yard to the 12. 
A big strong kid from Redmond, Oregon. He knows a lot about this Civil War. Had to back up, back up the great Blake Spence for the last three seasons, and now as a senior, he's really coming of age. And Weaver with 10 catches, actually 11 catches for Jed Weaver tonight. 37 on the season. Hartley, Griffin, both go left. Haynes is to the right, and Weaver is a tight end to the right side. Achille is looking his way now we'll have to scramble and he is sat down at the 10 yard line. Sean Ball the defensive tackle brought down Achilles Smith He faces another third down situation. They are now 12 of 21 converting third downs. Sean Ball another part of that Hawaiian connection. Wow. For that defensive line of the Beavers. Sean Ball out of Punahou High. Jason Cooper comes in the game for the fullback. Third and six. That's winding down, and now Oregon has to take a timeout. Achille Smith was reading the defense, looked at the clock wind down to three seconds, then saw it go down to one, and went to his hands, calling the timeout. We're in the second overtime. Tied at 38. And what has been a remarkable football game. Let's go to Kevin Frazier for uh, an update. Steve, it's been a remarkable day of college football. And Kevin, you and Kellen will be buying us dinner. Because that's right. we will be there as well. And we've been on the road all year long. So that's our invitation to you. Bringing the big guns down to Phoenix. <laughs> Kevin and Kellen. Kellen. Drive nine plays 16 yards. They at one time had a first and 43. I've never heard of a nine play 16 drive. Yeah, drive. Well, this game has a, had a lot of things that we've never seen before. Anoki Brechterfield just wants one more win. Third and six. Hartley Griffin left. Haynes to the right. Weaver the tight end joins him on that side. Smith down the middle. It is broken up. Fourth down and six. A great play by Michael Moore. When Michael Moore makes a great play over the middle. Oregon going to elect to kick the three points here, but. Akili Smith does a great job holding the ball high, great fundamentals, fires the ball low, just a shade behind Tony Hartley. Michael Moore locked on to a wideout at that time, making the play. Now Viegas. This from 26. It is good. And Oregon has the lead, but just by three, 41-38, it's Oregon State's turn. If they score a touchdown, the game is over. Both teams with great kickers, Jose Cortez for Oregon State, and Villegas we just saw for the University of Oregon. Let's go back to our College Football Saturday studios and Kevin Frazier. Welcome back into our College Football Saturday. Kevin for the first play of Oregon State's overtime drive, the second overtime here in Corvallis. Jonathan Smith in trouble. He throws it to Maurer, the tight end, and Maurer has about an eight, nine yard gain. They'll need two for a first down. Boy, they've been running Simonton so well. And to go pass on first down, thought it was a great call by Mike Riley. Boy, and you know what? Both quarterbacks have just made play after play, and Jonathan Smith that time. He's putting up some great numbers himself. He's just able to get the ball off was a great play that time getting the ball to the tight end of the flat. Let's see if they run Simonton this time. Yes they will and Simonton has the first down. Simonton to the five. Touchdown. Oregon State does win. Well, they're getting better at the celebration. Now they're all the field. <laughs> Second time around. Oregon State Mike Riley. Fifth win. The first time for Oregon State since 1971.